Why she wasn't happy with you yesterday, yesterday huh?
All right, at six o'clock, we want to welcome you to the Oconee County Board of Commissioners public hearing for the 2020 tax and millage levy. This is the first of three public hearings we're having. Uh, the next public hearing will be on Tuesday, July 28th. Uh, or excuse me, today is July 28th, 2020. Uh, the next public hearing will be August 4th at 6 p.m. And the last one will be August 25th at 5.30 p.m. If you're joining us virtually, hopefully you're using a computer or a smart device to ask a question or make comments during the public comment portions of the meeting, please use the raise hand feature in Zoom. With that, we'll turn it over to Wes or Justin, whoever's running this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, come before you tonight uh, to tentatively adopt the uh, millage rate, which will require an increase in property taxes by 4.7% in the unincorporated areas and 3.79% in the incorporated areas. The uh, tentative increase will reserve, result in a millage rate of 6.686 in the unincorporated areas. That has remained that way for uh, well over a decade. Um, the proposed tax for each home on a $350,000 home will be $41.40 on the uh, proposed in the unincorporated area. In the incorporated area, the tentative increase will result in a millage rate of 7.616%, and uh, that equates to approximately $38.36 on a fair market value home of $350,000. As you alluded to, Mr. Chairman, the next two uh, events for this uh, property tax notice is uh, August 4th and August 25th at 6 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. respectively. If there are any questions I can answer at this time, I'd be glad to say. Very good. Any questions of commissioners? No. No, thank you very much. No, now, now we open up for any public comment. Would anyone like to comment on the uh, proposed millage levy? Anyone from Zoom? Very good. With that, we'll go ahead and close the public comments and we'll close the public hearing and move into our regular scheduled meeting. So again, welcome to our regular scheduled meeting. Today is Tuesday, July 28th. Again, if you're joining us from uh, virtually, hopefully you're using Zoom. In just a moment, we're going to ask you to stand for a moment of silence. And then after that moment of silence, we're going to ask Kathy Hayes to lead us in the Pledge of the Flag. That our first item of business will be to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Next item is statement and remarks from citizens. Uh, this is from the, for anything that is not on our agenda for tonight. Would anyone like to speak? Any statements or remarks from commissioners? Mr. Chairman, I do. I'd like the uh, uh, opportunity to correct the misunderstanding from the last meeting we had on the variance request P20-0035. Just to correct the record on that uh, variance, I, the vote I made was yes and not no. Seems like there's a misunderstanding on that vote and it was a little quick. I kind of delayed a little bit. And I just want to clarify my vote on that. Okay, very well. Any objections to making corrections in a minute? No. All right, Kathy, if you would make those adjustments. Any other statements or remarks from commissioners? Just glad to be here. Good to have you back, too. Yeah. Appreciate all the thoughts and prayers. Um, I got that surgery off my bucket list, and hopefully it out. I won't ever have to have it again. <laughs> all right, our next item of business will be just to, to discuss uh, amendment, amendments to the ordinance regulating the sale of alcoholic beverages. Daniel?
we're doing this by means of uh, just a, an amendment to our existing ordinance. What we're doing is creating uh, a definition of a catered function, which is an event conducted by a bona fide, nonprofit, charitable, or civic organization where alcoholic beverages will be sold by a licensed alcoholic beverage caterer, as we will discuss what that is in a second. The proceeds from the event have to be used for charitable civic purposes. The event must not exceed one 24 hour period and has to comply at all times. It has to comply with the times of service that we use for our restaurants. A licensed alcoholic beverage caterer can be one of two things. Uh, state law ties our hands just a, a little bit on this. It can be the holder of a B4, C4, or D4 alcoholic beverage license who applies and is issued the license for, uh, to be an alcoholic beverage caterer, or it can be an alcoholic beverage caterer from another jurisdiction. Um, state law just says if you've got a license to be an alcoholic beverage caterer in one jurisdiction, you get to do it in other jurisdictions. Um, the way it will work, occur is that the person has the uh, caterer's license will apply for a permit. They'll tell us all the things they need to tell us in that permit and we'll charge $50 per permit. We'll turn it around in five business days and same hours of operation as the restaurants. Um, they've got to prove that they've done the, um, the training. We maintain our 18 year old server requirement. They have to tell us um, you know exactly where they're going to be serving and they have to other they have to comply with the UDC in terms of where events are located and um, they can't of course be within 100 yards of a church or 200 yards of a school building. Um, one other minor change that we wrapped into this is uh, you know we've had several instances where we've had an agent change for a licensee and we said uh, if they know about it, they've got to notify us 14 days prior to a replacement. If there's an unexpected replacement, they've got to notify us immediately. They've got to do the training at the first available class after the replacement. And if they don't do that, that's grounds for suspension of the license. Oh, we also, one other minor thing, we removed the, the requirement of mandatory attendance of an applicant unless the board wants to require that. That seemed like something that we started out doing it, but maybe it didn't serve any good purpose at this point. You can always require it, but we don't have to do that now. Very good. Any questions for commissioners on that? Discussion. Very good. Any public comments from the audience? <coughs> any public comments virtually? Very good. Very good. That'll serve as our first public hearing on this uh, ordinance change, and we'll discuss it again at our next meeting uh, next week. <coughs> next item is discuss revisions to the animal services ordinance. Crystal? I apologize for the lack of good evening. Thank you for the opportunity, Chairman Daniel, and to the board members um, to present to you the first reading of the newly proposed animal services ordinance. I'm Crystal Briscoe, manager for a county county animal services. We identified the need to review, revise, and simplify the ordinance to more, to more clearly defined technical terms, provide clarity, address the growing problems associated with residential pet overpopulation, and maintain the commitment to the mission, vision, and values for both the animal services operation and enforcement functions. Changes to the ordinance will chart a path toward closer alignment of the functions of Oconee County Animal Services with the needs of Oconee County. Key changes include the following. Article two, we've added some um, definitions to the ordinance. Article four, section 4-1 through 4-11, responsible dog ownership. This section refers to the Responsible Dog Ownership Law, OCGA 4-8-20 through 4-8-33, and is listed in our ordinance instead of just referencing the state code. Article five, owner responsibilities. Section 5-3, duty of the owner to keep animals under control. 
section 5-4, duty to keep animals under restraint while on the owner's property. Section 5-5, duty, duty to keep animals under restraint while off the owner's property. Section 5-6, specific requirements for confinement. Section 5-7, number of animals. Section 5-8, animal nuisance. Article 9, cruelty to animals. This section is referenced from State Code OCGA 16-12-4 and is listed out instead of just referencing the State Code. Article 13, managed care of feral cats. Those are all the additions to the newly revised ordinance. Uh, the Animal Services Advisory Board has reviewed and approved the proposed changes. Um, and I can answer any questions if you have any at this time. I would like to extend a huge thank you to Daniel Haygood um, for his guidance and assistance through this process. And I thank you, Chairman Daniel, and the board members for your consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wish to make comments on this ordinance change? Anybody virtually? No. This will close our first public hearing on this ordinance, and we'll talk about it again next week. All right, next item is to discuss the Georgia Department of Transportation Local Administered Project Certification and Title uh, VI Non Discrimination Agreement. Jody. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. It's good to see you, Commissioner Horton. Uh, glad you're back. Glad you're with us. And I uh, just wanted to bring this item of business to your attention tonight. It is the Georgia Department of Transportation Local Administered Project uh, Certification Process. And part of that is adopting a Title VI non discrimination agreement. And the Local Administered Project Manual sets forth uh, uniform guidelines and practices for local agencies to undertake and, and oversee certain core aspects of federal aid projects with Georgia DOT. It's a benefit to us to be able to move some of the projects ahead quicker. The State Route 53 roundabouts is uh, their federal aid projects. And so to manage those, we need to update our, uh, our LAP certification. But, um, and then part of it is the Title VI non-discrimination agreement. Uh, we would have to uh, update those agreements and approve those every year, send those in. And Georgia DOT policy is for jurisdictions under 100,000 in population. We can adopt Georgia DOT's agreements and, and policies. And then it requires us to designate a responsible point of contact to coordinate coordinate the Title VI efforts and to conform to the DOT's policies for report, reporting and statistical data. And uh, I reached out to Georgia DOT to see what that entailed because it said uh, to establish a, a um, civil rights unit. Well, Georgia DOT has that. They have the staff for that. They said, uh, the, the guy I talked to said that a lot of smaller jurisdictions, it's housed inside the public works. Um, so that would be my office that would be collecting the data if we have complaints and, and reporting those annually to GDOT and then bringing this agreement back before the board each year for, for renewal. Any questions about the, the lap or the Title VI? Any questions? Be all right for consent agenda on this one? Yes, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Any public comment? Any virtual? Our next time is discuss the water resources Kundal environmental management internship grant. Nikki. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Oconee County Resources Department is a recipient of the Kundal environmental management internship grant through the Association of County Commissioners of Georgia Civic Affairs Foundation. Uh, the Georgia County internship program created in 2010 uh, receives funding through the foundation to fund internships for college students and re recent graduates uh, 
so we can give them kind of firsthand knowledge of the county government, how it operates and uh, you know, as certain aspects of it. Now, the grant awards the cost of the wages at a rate of $12 per hour for each hour worked up to 200 hours for a maximum reimbursement of $2,400 per intern. Uh, the financial impact of the grant will be uh, $1,200 to the Water Resource Department. That is uh, part of the grant. Uh, we agree to match a $1,200 funding for the grant. And uh, it is uh, recommended that the board would execute this agreement. Thank you, sir. Any questions? No. Questions? I don't. I know everybody at this table remembers uh, Mr. Jim Cundell, or doctor, excuse me. I was a professor at the University of Georgia for over 30 years, uh, was a science advisor to the Georgia General Assembly for over 30 years, and had a positive impact on environmental policy through his involvement in water planning and uh, environmental issues. So we're very proud uh, to earn this award for because he was a, a great benefit to the county for all of us. Uh, if no additional questions, we can put this on the consent agenda for acceptance. Yes. Yes. Any further comments? Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Next item is to an update of the design services request for qualifications for the state route 53 roundabout. Just wanted to come before you and just give you kind of an update of where we are in the design process. So we did send out an RFQ request for qualifications. We received eight proposals back from consulting firms have gone through those shortlisted and got uh, four, uh, four firms, the top four firms, and we uh, sent the second phase of the, the RFQ out to them. And that was the technical approach, the uh, past history, the, the references. And so we, um, our, our selection committee has reviewed the technical approach and, and right now is reaching out to the references, checking those, verifying those, and uh, I was thinking we might be able to get everything done this week, but it looks like it would come back before the board at the agenda, at the August agenda setting meeting for a recommendation. Because once we get the top ranked firm, then we'll negotiate a price with them. And this is following a quali qualification based selection that uh, GDOT requires for federal aid projects. So we're following their guidelines with that. So, um, but it looks like it'll probably be the August agenda setting meeting when we present a recommended consultant. Very good. You want to hold you a spot just in case, or are you pretty confident? Uh, uh, we still have to do the negotiation. Okay. I was hopeful we might can get there, but okay. I don't know if we. No problem. I don't know if we'll get it done in a week. All right. Very good. Thank you, sir. Next time, we'll discuss the new alcohol license. Commissioners, um, we have a new alcohol license called Los Primos Taqueria Express. This will be in the location where Bold and Chick was. It will have a drive-through. Um, they are all, this is a business that's also owned by the Lacabana La folks. So Elias Hernandez will be the registered agent. I haven't seen Elias here tonight. I don't know. I mean, we still got it in the ordinance. They're supposed to attend. So that's totally up to y'all how y'all want to proceed with that. But um, they are looking for a 2020 alcohol license, which will carry them through the end of this year. We will be doing our renewals in September, so they will have to also apply for the renewal license. Okay. Any questions? I don't believe so. Uh, why don't you go ahead and contact him? We'll just leave it on the regular agenda. We won't put it on consent. Okay. So he can comply. Give him a chance to come next week. Okay, very great. good. Next item is consider the 2021 special local option sales tax referendum. Justin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. This is the final act in a fairly long process to uh, get the SPLOS vote ready for the November general election. And what this is, uh, you previously approved the IGA with the four municipalities, which had the divvy um, proportional share of the uh, sales tax referendum over the six years. What this is, is the 
approving of the uh, referendum ballot language and ultimately asking the um, Board of Elections to issue the call, uh, which they would do tomorrow night. And so uh, based on timing, this is something we will need uh, action tonight. The, um, there's a special called meeting of the Board of Elections tomorrow where they would issue the call and then the election will ultimately be held on the general election in November. Okay. Happy to answer any questions. We've had several meetings on this topic over the last several months. And see if anybody has any questions at this time. Um, so look, at, open it up for public comment. Do we have any public comments tonight? Anything from Zoom? No, right, sir. Thank you very much. All right, with that, we'll entertain a motion. I make a motion we approve the 2021 special local option sales tax flash referendum for the November 3rd, 2020 election ballot. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. All right, we do have the need for an executive session in reference to personnel. I make a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. Second. A motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries.
Make a motion we go back into regular session. Second. All right, motion second to go back into regular session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.